thank you so much for, for joining us. And, and please uh, t tell our audience the, the extraordinary experience you had on that day uh, immediately as, as that, first, that first plane hit. Well, I, from, a kind of, from a contextual standpoint, I was there in 1993 visiting a client. And uh, so on 2000, in 2001, I walked into the building, now working at Hannah Fitzgerald for a number of years, and I turned to the elevator banks. The first jet had been pummeled into the building. It exploded far above. The jet fuel was ignited. I was enveloped in fire as it burst out of the elevator banks. I could not breathe. Uh, the pain was incalculable. I tried running out of the building. I was being pulled back into the planes. Eventually, the backdrop released, and I was almost thrust outside of the doors with hurricane force winds, where I struggled to run across the six lanes of highway and drop and roll. And uh, at that point, uh, you talk about the humanity and the bravery. There were certainly so many brave people that day in uniform and out of uniform. I was helped by a former Lehman brother, and uh, he stood with me and by me. And as I had helped someone in 93, I was helped that day. And uh, it's been a long, tough road. I was burned 82 and a half percent, most of it third degree and parts of it fourth and fifth degree. So a many uh, year long recovery, but I am graced with uh, the blessings of being alive. I, I, it is just astonishing uh, to hear and see those pictures that you were, were burned over 80% of your body because it doesn't show right, right now. You look, you look unbelievable. T tell us uh, about how much resilience that, that required to get through the initial aftermath, both because of the, the injuries uh, you personally have, but also the, the loss of so many of your colleagues? The loss of 658 of my colleagues, among them very good friends and others that worked in different offices uh, throughout World Trade One and World Trade Two, was incalculably difficult. But I focused on the fact that I had been given a slim chance and my desire was twofold. It was to avenge all of my friends and colleagues who did not get even that slim opportunity that I had to fight. And secondarily, it was to come back to my young son. He was just 10 months old at the time. And I had screamed out to him that day when it would have been far easier to die. Um, although I did not believe even death would have released me from the pain. And I screamed to him that I would be back and that I would come back for him. And so that was the beginning of uh, a journey that lasted more than half a year in the hospital and countless years in recovery, recuperation, and additional procedures to be able to move my limbs. Lauren, I, I read somewhere that the head of the, the doctor at Weill Cornell, who's the head of the burn center, said you had about a 25% chance of survival which is not good odds. It's amazing that you're here. So what, how will you be commemorating the 20th anniversary tomorrow? Yeah, um, that was, Doctor, you're a tremendous man. It was 25% if I'd gotten out of there in less than 55 minutes. Uh, so I got out of the Trade Center less than 10 minutes before the South Tower fell, and my odds dwindled to the single digits for months at a time. How I will be commemorating the occasion tomorrow to honor my friends, colleagues, and what I consider family is with my Cantor Fitzgerald family, and uh, as we do every year with my husband and children. I mean, on that note of the what Cantor Fitzgerald went through, do you, do you find strength when you when you see how the company has progressed despite such loss? Uh, also, I guess when you when you walk around the memorial area, which we just saw again, and, and have a live shot, I'm sure ready to go of, and and what is there? It took time uh, and, and unbelievable lows in the immediate aftermath. But do you take optimism from from what you see there today? I think that my recovery was in a very minute way, emblematic of not only what my company did, but so many other companies did that day. Our city did, our nation did. And 
millions from around the world who join together in helping support the U.S. and the injured and the grieving for their losses. So I am inspired by the, the presence of the unmeasured strength that really exists within everyone and uh, continues to enable me to feel hope for a future, although the present uh, is sometimes troubling. Uh, there's always tomorrow. So, Lauren, what, what are you doing now? Are you still working in finance? I am. Uh, I'm still involved in finance, but I am running a pre-revenue startup in Ford Inc., which is the privatization, in essence, of consumer privacy. So, in a nutshell, the only people that haven't gotten played in the large ad games and redistribution of our purchase data trails and data streams are us, the consumer. And new board seeks to capitalize that and put dollars back in people's pockets. And, and finally, Lauren, 20 years, uh, it's hard to believe it's been that long, but it still seems so fresh for, for a lot of us who remember it. What, what do you want future generations, where it's more removed, what do you want them to learn about 9-11? I would say that it's not how strong you think you may have been or how weak you may have felt in the past. It's about the presence and understanding the incredible ability you have to persevere and to prevail, and that you should take any fear you have, own that fear, and use that fuel to power yourself forward. That is all we've got is the moment that we are living in now, and I say every day, you have a choice. Make it count. L Lauren, you, you are an amazing and uh, inspiring person, and, and thank you so much for joining us to, to share your story today.